السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته مرحبا بكم أيها الطلاب الكرام اليوم سنأخذ الدرس العاشر الجزء الثامن Today we're going to take lesson 10 part 8 We left off on page 59 at the top on التمرين السابع And in that تمرين we are going to take we are going to take مع If you notice the first example and the second and the third, they have ذهبه جلسه right? No, I'm sorry. خرج ذهب and جلسه. Here we go. خرج ذهب and جلسه. All right. These are verbs. Past tense verbs. The one doing this action is a vamir mustatir. It is a pronoun that is hidden. And it is huwa. As we were reading the uh, dialogue for chapter 10, we noticed that on one of them, they added to the letter ta. With a dhamma on there. Right? And they also added the letter ta with a fatha on there. And these are the ones that we are going to take for today along with ma'a and conclude this chapter insha'Allah. If you take, here, here are verbs, three letter verbs, past tense. There are three letters, there are four letter verbs, and what will end up happening is there are called extra letters that get added to them. So they'll say three letter plus two more, three letter plus one more, three letter plus three more. And what those are is when those letters get added, they will change what the word means, even though the root is the same. So, for example, when you say kharaja, kharaja means that he left, he exited. But then when you say, you add one of those extra letters, like, and it becomes akhraja, it means he took out. It went from he left to he took out just by adding one of those extra letters. Now, when we take plural and when we, uh, not plural, but when we take present tense and we take uh, the other forms, we'll go into that. But for now, we need to know how do I say I did something, right? I don't want to say, he went out. I want to say, I went out. So you take this word, kharaja. Right? And we said, you're going to add the ta. Can you add the ta just simply like this? No. You have to get rid of that. All right? You have to get rid of that big stomach of the jeem, and then you can make the tat. Kharaj tu. The letter before this tat turns into a sukun. Now, he went out, kharaja, kharaj tu. I went out. All you have to do is take a past tense verb, and they usually follow this formula, fatha, fatha, fatha. Right? You take one of those and you add a tat to the end. So every time you see this open-ended tat with a dhamma, it means you did something. So if I was to say, ذهب, he went out. ذهب, I gotta add the tat. ذهب to. I went out, or I'm sorry, I went. ذهب is he went. Dahab to is I went. Jalasa. This suffix is what gets added. This last letter gets added to the uh, verb. Jalasa is he sat. Jalas to. This is the person doing the action. This is the fa'il. Okay? You take anything like that and you should be able to change it. Take, for example, I will say, Kataba. How do you say, I wrote? 
you add two to the end of the word kataba. Kataba, kateb, two. Right? You take another word, dakhala, he entered. Dakhal, two. Take another word, sajada, he made sujood, prostration. Sajada, sajad, two. Akala, he ate. Akal, two. I ate. Shariba. See, this one's a little different. It has sheen or fatha kasra, fatha. And that sometimes can happen as long as it's following a similar pattern. Shariba, he drank. Sharib, two. Okay? <clears throat> Good. That's. Pretty much all we we're going to be taking with verbs. I think there's only four verbs mentioned in the whole book. Here's three. I can't remember what the fourth one is. Um, but I believe for those that want to have more vocabulary words and say, I want to learn. Like I told you guys before, this series, Arabic course, is this is book one. There's two and three, right? But when you are learning this course in the Islamic University of Medina, there are other books that go along with book one. And then there's other books that go along with book two and book three. Those are the supplemental books. I find that if you can get your hands on those, I think they have them on PDF. I'm not aware uh, exactly where you can go and download them from. Um, but I'm sure if you search for it online, you can find them. You get the vocabulary out of here. And you go at this pace, because this was specifically made for the non-native speaker. So this would be a good pace for you to go at. Let's continue through the examples, and then, inshallah, I'll give you guys a quick uh, conclusion, and we can be done with this chapter. Sual al-awwal. Kharaja hamidun ma'a khalidin. We said ma'a means with. All right, it is a dharf, and whatever comes after it is going to be majroor, kasra, or kasratain. Kharaja hamidun ma'a khalidin. Hamid exited or left with khalid. Dhahaba al-tabibu ma'a al-muhandisi. Dhahaba al-tabibu ma'a al-muhandis. The doctor went with the engineer. Jalasa al-mudarrisu ma'a al-mudir. All right, Jalas al Mudarisu Ma al Mudir. The teacher sat with the principal or the manager. Now, you don't have to say uh, always Jalasa. You, if you're talking about yourself, you're going to say Jalas tu. So you might say Jalas tu Ma al Talibi. I sat with a student. Jalas tu Ma al Imam. Jalastu ma'a a shaykh. You see how you can uh, form sentences if you you know know how to work these uh, words that you have now. And we also mentioned that you'll be you should already know to add <clears throat> the vama'ir to ma'a. Okay, and what you're going to be adding from vama'ir is either the uh, who, ha, ka, ki, or ya. You're going to add these. So you can say, ma'ahu, ma'aha, ma'aka, ma'aki, or ma'i. Okay? And when you do that, they will be written. This is a ha. They will be written this way so that it could accommodate for the proper uh, attachment to that word. And lastly, we're going to put ma'i over here. Ma'i. With him, with her, with you male, with you female, and with me. This is something you should be able to do very easily. All right? <clears throat> Number four, man ma'aka ya aliyu, man ma'aka, who's with you, oh Ali, ma'i zamili, 
Aminatu ma'aha zawjuha. This is the next one. Amina with her is her husband. Number six. Kharaja abi min al bayt. Kharaja abi min al bayt. My dad left the house or from the house. Man kharaja ma'ahu. Man kharaja ma'ahu. Kharaja ma'ahu ammi. Who went out with him? My uncle went out with him. Number eight. <clears throat> this is simply just a conjugation of how to say um, your house, my house. We've taken this before. And for the bottom two, abun and akhun, ab and akh, those are, that means brother, I'm sorry, father and brother. Ab is father and akh is brother. We said those ones are from al asma al khamsa, from the five names, five nouns. And when you attach something to the word ab, the original wow of the word comes back. So you say abuka. If you add any of these, I'm sorry, not any of these, any of these, not this one. You say, Abuhu, Abuha, Abuka, Abuki, and then you'll finally say, Abi. So this wow has to come back because this is the symbol that it is marfu'. Okay? Um, yes, that's the symbol, it's marfu'. You say, well, how come it doesn't show here? We say it can't because the ya overpowers its ability to show that. And when we when you get into i'rab a little more, we can explain why the ya does that. And akhu is this or akhun is the same way. The next part. Abi wa ummi fil bayti. My mother and father are at home. Aina abuka ya hamidu. Aina abuka ya hamidu. Where is your father? O Hamid. ذهب إلى السوق. He has went, or he went to the market. أأخوك طبيب. Is your brother a doctor? لا هو مدرس. زينب في الرياض. أخوها في الطائف وأبوها في المدينة المنورة. Zainab is in Riyadh, and her brother is in Taif, and her father is in Medina. Right? هذا الطبيب أبوه وزير وأخوه تاجر كبير. This student, his father, is a wazir, is a minister. وأخوه and his brother is a big merchant. Next page. ذهب أخي إلى المدرسة وذهب أبي إلى الجامعة. ذهب أخي إلى المدرسة وذهب أبي إلى الجامعة. My brother went to the school and my father went to the university. Now when I read them, you may say I already know what it means, but I want you to hear the pronunciation and I would like for you even to try to copy the pronunciation. So that way you can try to uh, master it a little better. Number nine are a list of names. And in these lists, you see the top row is Mu'rab, and the next one is Mamnu'um min as -sar. Actually, they're both Mu'rab, but uh, one is accepting Tanween, and the bottom row is not accepting Tanween. Hamza, Talha, Usama, Mu'awiyah, and Ikrima. None of those accept Tanween. We said why? Although it's a masculine name, it's written in the form that is typically a feminine name. So therefore, because it resembles that, it will not accept tanween, similar to how feminine names don't accept tanween. اقرأ الأسماء واضبط أواخرها It says, read the names or the following names and place the harakah at the end of it. Now, just the name, the list is right above. You should be able to do this very easily on your own. Okay. Khalidun, Hamzatu, Ammarun, Anasun, Muawiyatu, Hamidun, Usamatu, Ikrimatu, Abbasun, Muhammadun, Talhatu. It's right above. Shouldn't be any challenge at all. Next, we have the new words. Zamil is a classmate. Zoj is a husband. Zoj actually means pair, but it typically refers to a husband. 
And if you say zawjatun, it means uh, wife. Wahid is one. Fata is young man or boy. Ma'a, with. Al-Tiflu, we said toddler or infant. Al-Kuwait is the, the, the country, Kuwait, and al is language. So with that, we will have concluded chapter 10, alhamdulillah. Now, lastly, at the end of chapter 10, like we said, we're going to go five chapters, test, five chapters, test. From chapter 5 until chapter 10, there was a lot more information, maybe triple the amount of information that there was previously. So for those that are eager to uh, advance to the next book and say, where's book 2, where's book 2? We need to conclude this book properly, all right? And therefore, I would say, take this test, inshallah, and see how well you do. Because that'll tell you how well you know chapter 1 to chapter 10. And if that's if it's good from to 1 to 10 in book 1, that probably means you're ready to go to book 2. But if you're struggling in it, that means this is where you should be. And only for you to put on more is not going to help you, but it's going to get you to the point where you know a little bit of everything and you don't know it properly. So, take your notes down. There's got to be hundreds of words by now. Uh, I know one time we did a list and we had maybe 50 words or 40 words up there. Way back in chapter Allahu A'lam when. But if we have taken probably three times the amount up to then, I'd say we're over 200 words maybe. Very easily. Maybe even more. Allahu A'lam. But the point being is uh, review Organize your things. Don't just take jumbled notes. Go back and reorganize your notes and you will progress inshallah. And as you see, we're pumping out two videos now per week and we're going to maintain this for uh, some time now inshallah ta'ala. Um, as always, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach us that which will benefit us and make, make us benefit with that which we have learned. And our last and final prayer is Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. One last thing actually, we are thinking inshallah that the answers to the test we may have a live session for that so stay tuned on our channel to see if we'll be able to do a, lo a live session for the grading or for the answers of chapter 10's test alhamdulillah rabbil alameen wassalamu alaikum